Welcome to What's My Personality Type? In this video, we'll learn about another aspect of personality theory called temperament. Temperament refers to your core needs that drive your behavior. Within the 16 Myers-Briggs personality types, there are four temperaments, the guardian, the artisan, the rational, and the idealist. This video will focus on the strengths and blind spots of the idealist. Idealists are those people whose second letter of their MBTI type is N for intuition and whose third letter is F for feeling. So the types that fit the idealist category are INFJ, INFP, ENFJ, and ENFP. While these types can look very different from each other, they all have some common core needs. The idealist core needs are for self-actualization, authenticity, creativity, and personal relationships. They like to work with people harmoniously in order to identify creative solutions to problems and to help others succeed. All idealists have certain strengths, although they may look a bit different according to the individual. But for the most part, idealists are caring, creative, and imaginative visionaries who are constantly striving to be the best people they can be and to help other people reach their potential as well. They have a strong moral core, mostly basing their decisions on their personal values. And because they tend to create harmony, they are great at motivating others and gaining consensus on a team. They are usually the voice of integrity, always wanting to do the right thing, both ethically and as it relates to the potential impact on people. Because idealists value relationships above almost everything else, they communicate well, show appreciation readily, and make others feel good about themselves and their jobs. And finally, as creative thinkers, they often find new and different ways to look at situations and can visualize how seemingly different concepts can come together to form a big picture or idea. However, all idealists can have some blind spots as well. Because of their empathetic nature, they can sometimes have trouble staying detached and may have a hard time criticizing or disciplining someone, even when it's merited. They tend to give people multiple chances and can therefore be taken advantage of. In addition, their empathy can cause them to use personal preferences rather than objective data when they make decisions, which can cause others to see them as too partial or unfair. And because idealists value agreement so much, they may sacrifice their own opinion to maintain harmony and tend to take responsibility for all of their relationships, and so are vulnerable to feeling guilty about situations that are not at all their fault. Idealists are not always practical when they get caught up in big ideas, especially ones where they feel like they can save the world. And if their plans don't work, they may have a tendency to feel self-reproachful. Now, not all idealists will exhibit these behaviors, but they may be more likely than other types to have this mindset, so it's important to be aware of these tendencies. So if you're an idealist and find that you have some of these blind spots, you can grow and develop your type by learning how to step back from situations and look at them more objectively. You can practice bringing in logical criteria when making decisions to help balance out the people focus you're probably using. Using more objective data will also help you to be more practical when dreaming up your big ideas, making you more likely to succeed. So what are some ways you can build on your remarkable strengths as an idealist to overcome some of your blind spots? Here are some activities you can try to be a bit more practical and avoid your good nature being taken advantage of by others. First, be willing to invite criticism. As a feeler, you may have a tendency to take things personally, but if you look at criticism purely as information that you can use to improve, you will find that feedback, even negative feedback, can be utilized as a learning opportunity. This means that you may have to develop a thicker skin, which can be done by shifting your attitudes a bit. You probably assume that criticism is meant with a negative intent, but in reality, most people who point out flaws are genuinely trying to help. Examining intent before presuming negativity can help you to be more open to criticism. Second, you can practice engaging in productive conflicts. If you're an extrovert and you get your feelings hurt, you may react emotionally in the moment and say something you'll regret, which can then devolve into an angry scene. And if you're an introvert, you might tend to withdraw or give up too easily to avoid hurting anyone's feelings. Now, not all conflicts have to be negative situations. And by avoiding conflict or always accommodating others, you're denying yourself the chance to make your case or resolve simmering issues. A productive conflict is one where both sides are able to be heard 
and some kind of collaboration or compromise can take place. Try taking emotions out of the equation and focusing on the objective issues at hand. You will still want to maintain the relationship after the conflict is over, so you're probably already pretty good at diplomatically approaching others. You just need to make sure that you stand your ground if the other person is more assertive than you and not allow yourself to get emotional or personally offended. Finally, as an idealist, you are probably a big picture, future focused dreamer, which is usually a good thing. But there are times when you need to be realistic about situations and understand that you can't always save the world. So try working on the smaller steps that you can take today to reach your goals. Sometimes those details that seem so boring and inconsequential actually are important. So working on developing your sensing function will help you to become more grounded and practical when you need to be. Try a sensing type hobby such as gardening, sports, or cooking. Anything that takes you out of your head for a while and forces you to focus on the physical world. You don't have to give up your big abstract ideas. The point is to learn to balance those ideas with applied processes that can help you make those dreams a reality. I hope you found this information on the idealist temperament helpful. If you want more videos on personality type, subscribe to our channel below. And thanks for watching.